from India and I am representing the International Society of Nephrology social media team for the World Congress of Nephrology 2022. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing a dear colleague of mine, Dr. Divya Bajpai. So she is an associate professor of nephrology in the prestigious GSF and KEM Medical College. She's also a very active member of the Nephrology Social Media Network. So you must know her as an executive faculty of the NSMC, ISN education member, and uh, she's also a member of the Indian Society of Organ Transplantation, and also a VA editor for several journals like the CJSN, Nephron, Kidney International Reports. And she also has a very uh, brilliant academic record with several gold medals and awards and several publications in in national and international journals. Her uh, areas of interest include obstetric nephrology, uh, lupus nephritis, transplantation, and atypical HUS. So I'm honored to be interviewing you today, Divya. Thank you, Kritika, for the kind introduction. It's really a great honor and a pleasure for me to be here today. Thank you. So let me start off asking you this question. What inspires you the most in the field of nephrology? So, uh, Kritika, currently I am in that state of mind that, uh, especially in the uh, place where I practice in my country, especially in the public sector, I see lots of uh, disparities in access to the kidney care, especially when they're gender related. So I am currently very passionate about obstetric nephrology, as you uh, have already uh, mentioned. And I am really uh, like, uh, I am really driven to work for the betterment of uh, women with kidney diseases because I day in and day out see women who are with kidney diseases and are not getting adequate care, even uh, what, the, what the men in my society, in my um, uh, place are getting. And especially there are uh, lots of pregnancy related, uh, pre probably preventable deaths and morbidity happening. So uh, currently I am uh, really uh, driven to work in the field of obstetric nephrology. So I can relate to what you're saying. And uh, can you briefly talk about some of the projects you're currently involved in? Uh, yeah, so I am working on few projects uh, in uh, in the pathophysiology of preeclampsia. I'm also working in long term outcome of uh, pregnancy related kidney diseases and also uh, kidney diseases in female uh, women uh, kidney transplant recipients. So that's fantastic. Uh, so, I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing all your work. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so you have a very special session in the WCN 2022. Can you give us a glimpse of your talk, Outcomes of COVID-19 and Chronic Kidney Disease Patients? Yeah, actually, I'm lucky to get that session. It's, it's something very pertinent. As you know, we are currently in the middle of third wave in our country and also uh, globally. So in my talk, I'll be actually uh, uh, stressing or bringing to a front the fact which most of us have already realized that CKD is now the leading uh, risk factor of severe COVID-19 and also COVID-19 related deaths. I'll be putting forth the data which supports that irrespective of uh, or rather independent of the comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, CV diseases and even age. Uh, even young uh, kidney disease patients are at high risk for COVID-19 related uh, morbidity and mortality. Uh, and also in the other part, I'll be talking about how uh, patients who have recovered from COVID-19, how this continues to affect their kidney health over long term. Uh, we have come to know about the glomerular diseases which are happening uh, with COVID. And also uh, there is a signal now that COVID-19 can cause progression of already existing kidney disease. And even in your practice also, you must have seen that people who are CKD stage three, four, they are pushed to end stage and they end up with dialysis once they get COVID-19 at AKI. So those are some things which I'll be stressing upon because it's extremely important uh, for, uh, to, for us. It can be a practice changing thing uh, for us in future. And also I'll be talking about some things which we did uh, in the city of Mumbai to handle these patients. So during this pandemic, what would you say say was your most toughest challenge that you has to, had to face in patients with chronic kidney disease and how did you go about dealing with it? 
So, Kritika, as you will, uh, you would know, uh, Mumbai is the sixth most populous city in the whole world. Uh, approximately 73,000 people live here over every uh, square mile. And we have more than 10,000 people who are on dialysis. So the biggest challenge uh, to us in the very beginning of the pandemic and also with every upcoming wave uh, of the pandemic was to provide a timely and safe, uh, effective dialysis to all these people who are already on dialysis or who are getting initiated now. So uh, there was a very uh, like big chaos when people turned positive. There were some centers which were giving dialysis to positive, some were not. Uh, and every no one knew where to send these patients. And as a collateral damage to this, even the negative patients suffered who required to be, be dialyzed timely. So uh, the team of nephrologists in Mumbai, along with the government officials, we came up with, a, with something known as Portal Victory. Uh, which was an online dashboard where real time every dialysis center uh, which was registered could uh, see could register their patients and could tell the slots which are there and that it was the dashboard's responsibility to then allocate the dialysis slot to these patients who are either positive negative and even suspects uh, so that helped us a lot and i'll be discussing that in my talk uh, yeah we have uh, there was one more thing which we did uh, especially in Mumbai, because uh, ours is a public sector uh, hospital. So we had loads of patients coming in and out daily. So we opened uh, something known as a high dependency kidney unit, uh, for especially for people uh, with kidney disease who were COVID positive. So there were COVID ICUs, there was COVID ward, and there was this high dependency kidney unit. It exclusively admitted people who are positive and with kidney diseases. And um, I would discuss that in the talk, but at the end of the bottom line is that when we compared the mortality, uh, pre-HDKU and post-HDKU, we saw a definite uh, reduction in mortality and improvement in survival of these patients. So I feel that was also an intervention which, uh, which helped us. It's, it's like an indigenous uh, solution to a problem. What about patients? Yeah, so this HDKU, we especially had uh, PD nurses who were trained in PD and we could do even acute PD. So we had people whom we could not dialyze because of either SIRS uh, or poor hemodynamics and also some people where the uh, access was a challenge. So we did acute PD. We had CAPD patients who were admitted there. Uh, so, uh, you know, managing them in a public sector general ward is a big challenge in itself. And uh, we were not perfect, but uh, and all this we was done did whatever we could. And all this was done at a very nominal cost or free of cost. It was free. It is completely free. Like this is a free hospital. It's it, everything is, uh, it's, it, the cost is borne by the government. So the resources are always limited. It's like we have to always try it. It's, it's that way. Thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> thanks, Kritika. It's excellent work and thanks for advocating for your patients. Uh, thank you for taking time off today uh, for this thank interview. You, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's discuss more in the talk. So I would request everyone to attend the talk and all the other sessions at WC and it's going to be awesome. We definitely will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.